Hi there, I'm Jason Memel, and I'm here on Talk Gnosis, and today we're going to try something new, Meet a Gnostic. We've done lots of shows interviewing experts and academics about their books and their fields of study, and this is probably part of the tradition of Gnosticism where searching for a new kernel of wisdom might unlock some fresh door of experience. What we thought we'd also do is let you meet some of the people who call themselves Gnostics on top of what it is that we study and think about. So, uh, and if you're new to Gnosticism, maybe the absolute shortest way I can describe it is a kind of deeper knowing, something you can't be learn, something that you can't learn or be taught, but that you can discover, hence this search, through faith, mystical exploration, or my personal favorite, art. It can be described as remembering a deep connection, and then the one, a deep connection that you didn't know you forgot. And a lot of older traditions, or what we often call classic Gnosticism, have whole cosmologies of figures that are either trying to keep us from remembering or at the very least, get in the way of remembering, or in other cases, try to help us remember. So that's a that's a really quick overview. Um, and uh, the Gnostic we're going to meet is my co-host, the person who's been doing the show longer than me, the person whose voice you've probably heard if this isn't your first show, Jonathan Stewart. Um, Jason, Jason real pleasure to, to be on. You know, long, long time <laughs> listener, first time caller, uh, big fan. You know, I, I've been watching and listening to this show for, for more than a decade now. And uh, it's, it's a real honor to, to finally be invited on. So so thanks so much. Well, I mean, it, we literally couldn't do this show without you. <laughs> uh, you know, you could because I, I did. I inherited the show, right? Like a curse. So um, <laughs> someday, someday the curse will be passed on. It could be passed on to you. You never know. Uh, us, us young bucks of the AJC. Um, you know, there's there's a lot to unpack there, and I think um, uh, it's going to come up in some of my later questions. Part of me wants to dive into it right now, but. But honestly, before we dive into into some of the what, what you and I are doing here on Talknosis and why we're doing it, because um, that's part of what makes us Gnostic and our expression of it, uh, what's your like Gnostic origin story? Like, how did you come to this 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 process, this system? Yeah, that's that's a great question because it allows me to to talk about my favorite topic, which is myself. Of course. Uh, and uh, I think a lot of people in in Gnosticism have a a follow the breadcrumbs story, right? And and that is sort of the way. Now, you know, we 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 have to live our lives forward, but we can only understand our lives backwards, right? So I I'm not necessarily sometimes when you when you tell stories like this, it, it is a story, it is a narrative. It, it's the only way that we can understand ourselves, uh, our personalities and and the universe. So, you know, was was fate leaving out synchronicities for me to find? You, you know, maybe, maybe not. Um, but from a young age, uh, I, I've always had a mystical bent. You know, I, I, I always was looking into tree, tree, trop, tree tops for, for angels. <laughs> um, you know, I, I had a, uh, a grandfather that, that I really loved who was, uh, who was a mason, who uh, loved ghost stories, uh, who loved UFOs, who had uh, the, the full collection of the, the talk about being young bucks um, of, of, of the time life mysteries of the world uh, series, Jason, do you know what that oh. is? It's, it's like these, these big black books. What we'll do is, is we'll link the commercials on YouTube. So um, <laughs> uh, they, they were big, but they were relatively thin and they were like, they were like pop um, uh, uh, weird stuff books. So they're in, and they, they were grouped by themes, right? So, you know, one was ghosts. One was, you, you know, strange sites. One was uh, uh, UFOs, uh, cryptid stuff like that so he lived out in the country and i'd you know just sit down and, and read those books hmm. um so uh, uh all, all that said as well as as being you know quite strangely religious from a young age let's see what what, what minute are we at here people have already turned off the, the show so <laughs> Not strangely religious from a young age because you know my immediate family again like this grandfather uh was religious uh he was a deacon in his uh, presbyterian church but my immediate family you know they, they were christmas christians um, but, uh, from, from a young age, I felt a pull of, of, of faith, right. And, and, and a, and a want and a need to, to discover, uh, and to, to do more than hear stories, right. To, to live the stories, to have the experiences that, that one reads about, uh, in the Bible and so forth. Um, and from a relatively young age, I found the Christian mystics and, uh, uh the Gnostics, you know, and, uh, you, sometimes I hate to admit this, but, uh, but I, I think I'm in in fine i'm in a safe space uh you, you <laughs> I know think so. uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think like many people the the science fiction writer philip k dick right um you know reading his books uh, people are going to find this hard to believe but i was a bit of a nerdy kid uh <laughs> but um 
so reading his books, uh, finding tarot. I remember being quite fascinated by tarot at a young age, you know, buying mm. decks. Um, you know, I was always buying like like weird new age books. Uh, you know, this is the 90s on Prince of Island, right? I, I fortunately did have a university <laughs> library card that a um that a friend let me use. So I was able to order in weird books, right? So so I was into all this weird stuff, but I remember even in the the nineties and nineteen ninety-nine, I was 17 so people you can do the math about uh about how old i am now <laughs> 17 is that right and i i don't know if i've ever told you the story jason but i um the, the two two things happened which was uh you know i was either going to go to university or i was going to join a monastery and i came i came quite close to going to a monastery in nebraska for a year and i mean very very close hmm. um but I also remember something that happened around that time was finding Gnosis.org, which was uh, Bishop Heller's uh, church, which is um, a uh, the Ecclesia Gnostica, uh, which is a separate denomination from ours, but uh, has a, a lot of the same lineage. It comes from what they call the, the French Gnostic lineage. And and finding out that 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 there was a, a living Gnosticism um, uh, in the modern age was very exciting. But, you know, I noticed that he, he only had a few a few churches you had to be in person to study for his priesthood um you uh so i'm like okay i'm probably not going to live in la um and i uh, uh so i'm probably never going to be part of this but that's that's cool the, the, the cool stuff and then then i did religious studies um uh thinking that i'd either go into the possibly clergy of the united church as the denomination i came from a, a wonderful church i'm still quite fond of or or maybe go into academia but um you know, th those career paths for uh, a, a number of reasons. I'm sure people have already figured out that religious studies academia is, is not an easy career path. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of the scholars we have here uh, on the show can continue all, tell you all about that. Um, and, you know, I was a writer from, from a young age as well. Uh, you, for, for people who don't know, Jason and I were born on the same day in the same geographic area, uh, are both um, science fiction, fantasy fans who became Gnostics and are theater people. Um, and, and through... <laughs> Through theater, it's pretty weird. I, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, through theater, you know, I, I got into writing, right? Because uh, I would just write my own plays, and um, I uh, 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 got into copywriting. You know, I moved to Montreal for a combination of school and chasing a girl. I, I didn't think I would <laughs> I would stay here. Uh, I always thought, you know, I'll, I'll live here for a year or two. I've always liked Montreal, um, and uh, I, I'm still here. That was what year is it? That was 2006. <laughs> uh, wow. so yeah no it's been it's been a long time a little off and on though because you know mm. i did live briefly in new york and i kind of went back we kind of used montreal as a home base to, to live between a few different uh, places mm. um this is uh that's, i think the show is almost over um so <laughs> you know i when i turned 30 i i started uh you know i've been going to the united church here but then i, I moved to a uh, a different neighborhood i was also uh, partying and you know getting up early for church on uh you know it's sunday folks that's after saturday <laughs> so uh you know young, montreal used to be the place where young people would go to retire it, it has gentrified quite rapidly but you know it used to be a pretty a pretty it's still a fun loving place but it used to be a very mm -hmm. easygoing fun loving place um and uh, i also moved neighborhoods you know so, mm -hmm, so it wasn't just mm -hmm. a licentious uh, uh um licentious uh, lifestyle where I, I wasn't even you know was, was there was no united church close to me uh in, mm -hmm. in my new neighborhood um so uh but when i turned 30 i i, I started to I, i'd been a bit of a, a spiritual seeker i, I got it into meditation you know i i had studied a few different groups i'd gone to a few different services um i checked out a few uh you know eastern religions what have you um but, but i always felt uh uh felt the pull of christ um and couldn't couldn't get the jesus guy out of my system which is you know something that mm. uh, we talk about a lot um and uh so you know i i just I had not stopped being a person of faith, but I had drifted away from my, my faith community and kind of being more active about it. When I turned 30, I, I started, you know, things things happen. Um, so I, I started to to look for for something deeper, you know, for, for a group or a more organized spirituality. And um, I actually found Martinism, which which makes sense because I'm in a French city. And it actually was a French group that was starting its first ever English group. And for those mm -hmm. that don't know, I mean, we can't explain entirely what Martinism is. And just, you know, you, <laughs> look, we'll link. We'll, we have a playlist. <laughs> yeah, so we've done episodes. Yeah. We've done episodes. We, got, we have a Martinist playlist. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, this is this is debate-ish, um, but... 
Um, the at least in my reading, you know, there's a lot of Gnostic streams of thought in Martinism. Um, it's um, it, it's not a public church. Uh, some people will call it secret. You know, I'd say that it's it's private. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if you if you want to know the secrets, they're all online, so it's it's not particularly secret. Um, mm -hmm. the, not only online, but in your local bookstores. We've talked about lots of Martinist books on on the show. Um, of course. You know, it, yeah, and, and Martinism uh, being this this French kind of Gnostic esoteric movement from the 1700s and 1800s, it had a close relationship with the with the French Gnostic Church because there's a revival of Gnosticism in the 1800s uh, in a, in a more structured ecclesiastical church like fashion, and. Um, it was through martinism that i discovered the apostolic joanite church just while googling about martinism there was a priest giving a, a talk about about martinism and you know oh okay he's a priest oh and he's in a he's in this ajc thing and oh you know the head bishop uh the patriarch is actually in canada uh and so i started corresponding with these these weirdos um and you know i actually dipped my toe in the water relatively cautiously to be honest right because mm -hmm. you know it started off with some emails and then then i went to the first conclave my first conclave not the first conclave which is you know <laughs> a mix of uh a mix of sort of conference and spiritual retreat um in 2013 um and you, you, um you know i have a religious studies background um i know what a dangerous cult is of course that's what everybody says who you know ends up joining a dangerous cult right very intelligent <laughs> people by the way all jokes aside it's 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 usually middle class educated college educated people who are like the backbones of cults and very very educated people join cults but you know mm. i knew what you know i knew i knew what a dangerous cult was um and uh i also knew what a what a foolish cult was so because the, there's some out there that aren't dangerous but are, are a waste of your time and, and the yeah. ajc didn't strike me as as i as any of those things so um um, so, you know, I, I continue to get more and more involved. And uh, here I am, the end. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I had, but if you also talk about like faith journey, you know, I, I, I had always had this this Christian mystic bent. But, you know, from an early age, Gnosticism had resonated with me. And even when I wasn't formally practicing or studying it, it at all, it, it was still an obsession of mine. Right. You know, throughout my 20s, even when I wasn't. Mm -hmm involved of any groups right so i was always reading about it i i always identified as it uh, maybe i wouldn't talk to people i wouldn't say that i'm a gnostic to somebody because then they're like oh you're agnostic me too or you know mm -hmm. actually i'm an atheist or and then you have to have the whole conversation uh you know to, to having this show or or doing more public gnostic things uh in montreal is, is a better better place to have that conversation so totally. uh yeah, so I think that's that's that, that that's me in a nutshell. That... <laughs> you're, you're doing the nutshell dance, yeah. um, but uh, no, that's great, and I think that's like part of the reason I wanted to do the this series and and um, why I wanted to ask these questions is because I think like everybody has their own story, but their own story has commonalities with a lot of other stories. Yeah, you know, like moments of like recognition of something, um, something that you're maybe following. Uh, out of an internal desire, that kind of thing. Like that's a lot of what I was hearing there. Um, uh, but also like opportunity, like the the things that like the the b things being in the right place, you know, um, uh, like uh, such as the AJC, because that's my own experience with them, is that uh, they were in the right place at the right time and were like a level headed, per, you know, good good group of people that I could go like, okay, I can I can explore with these people. So um, yeah. You yeah. know, this, this every time we talk about the AJC, it sounds like we're doing a commercial uh, for them, but it is <laughs> uh, honestly what what we believe, and it's been our experience. And mm -hmm. um, I think what some people have trouble who uh, the, online or who have not experienced the AJC is that is that there's a lot of flexibility, but not so much that there's nothing going on. Right? They they they've, mm -hmm. they create a container. Uh, for you to to study, experience, and practice Gnosticism, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think that container is important, and and so is community. Um, like, I've always been a joiner, Jason. You know, my parents <laughs> signed me up for a lot of things as as a kid. Um, you know, I, I have little brother, even though I don't have an older brother, like like little brother older, uh, little brother like lonely kid syndrome. Even though mm -hmm. like this is not a brag, I actually always had friends, but you know, it's whatever reason, mm -hmm. right? I don't, I'm, I haven't figured it out in my in 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 my um, psychoanalysis yet. 
um <laughs> some some of the little the 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 the, the, the little brother stuff is um just being a, a September kid and and being right on the cutoff for for going yep. into into the grade and, and being mm-hmm. you know uh, the, kind of verbose and quote unquote a little bit more intelligent. Um, I wasn't right. That's why people at home see me doing quote unquote <laughs> the verbose part. However, is true, right? People have already <laughs> figured that out. So you know, I hung out with a lot of people older than me, and you know, when I started doing theater, I did theater uh, a lot of theater of a lot of a lot of older people. You know, when you do community mm-hmm. theater and semi professional theater, well, you know, like I'm cast in a role that that's appropriate to my age, but there's a whole range of, of ages, right? So you know, mm-hmm. you can go to the cast parties, be like, oh wow, I can I can have a beer. This is so cool. I'm so sophisticated and talk about art and, and what have you. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so yeah, I, I've always, I've always been a joiner, and I understand that people out, are out there aren't joiners. But you know, I, I and I used to be. That's good. You know, um, you have your own path. Uh, you do you. But uh, as the world um, burns, um, as <laughs> as our institutions fall apart. I think people need to become joiners and you don't have to join the AJC, but you, if, if, if you feel the pull of Gnosis um, and if you're watching the show, then you are, then join something for the love of God, right? Just have a reading group and uh, go yeah. make sandwiches for, uh, uh, for the, uh, uh, for the homeless or something uh, because uh, we need to find new ways to live in community and, and to rebuild community. That was, that, that was a bit of a rant, um, but it does, <laughs> it does great. go yeah. off of my, I, I, it is actually a development in me because, you know, when I talk about the AJC in the past, people, there's 200 shows. You can go back and, and watch it. I'm always careful to say, and I'm still careful to say, like, this may not be the path for you. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. you're not a joiner. But I have pivoted to, this may not be the path for you, but you should join something that is that is safe and will give you a container. Um, communities also keep you more honest. And, and you have at least some kind of tradition, right? You have, like, mm-hmm. some guardrails, even if they're a little bit sketchy. Yeah. Um, even oh. if they're um, uh, um, because, you, you know, when you try to do it yourself, it just becomes a, a personal religion or it just becomes nothing. Right. And, and sometimes it is hard to, to figure out what is what is acceptable, what's not acceptable, what, what it is that, that the HAC is doing uh, dogmat- uh, dogmatically because it's not a dogmatic church. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, by the way, when the, as you know, fans of the show, this this will be somebody's first show. It could be about three thousand people is in the show. It could be lots of people's uh, first show. Yeah. Um, uh, the whatever uh, the we talk about the Apostolic Joanna Church, even though I wear the collar as a deacon, I'm not speaking on behalf of of the denomination, uh, on behalf of Talk Gnosis, on behalf of even my local group, right? It's mm-hmm. it, it's just me uh, uh, riffing. So yeah. Um. So yeah, Jason, do you, do you have more questions? <laughs> I do have more questions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, like some of what you were saying there that you've pivoted to, um, uh, regarding like uh, that you know you know, uh, maybe joining isn't for everybody, but you should join something. Yeah. Is there, is that a, is that a, um, like what's capturing your interest most in Gnosticism right now? Like, I think in a lot of ways, episodes on this show, show, show a lot of us what's capturing your interest right now. Cause you know, you, you go and find those people and you talk to them, but like, how would you define that in terms of your sort of current Gnostic practice, your current Gnostic life? You know, um, is it, is it about this idea of thinking like of, thinking a bit more about community or uh, is it about uh, like, I know you've got a, um, a thesis you're working on. Like, yeah. T- talk to us a bit about that. Yeah, no, I, I think so. Right. Because it's, it's what do you do with it? Um, and uh, it being Gnosticism. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, there is just, uh, you know, I am a Christian Gnostic at the end of the day, or maybe a Gnostic Christian. We'll, we'll figure out which one of those two I am. So, <laughs> so there, there, there is a call for a, for a community there. And I think that's where you can both find Gnosis, where you can uh, put Gnosticism into action, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, what's great uh, with my local group, which is which is quite small, of course, like like like, like many Gnostic groups, um, the local parish. But we, we have a, a, a great member, uh, the, the actual only formal other member of the AJC in Montreal, because she joins in Conclave, which is Christina, and you know, well, I do my my little ramble uh, after after mass um, or after meditation, which which is usually on a, a specific topic or you know whatever the holiday is uh, or feast day that that's being celebrated. And you know, Christina always has radically different interpretations of mine, right? And isn't afraid to mm-hmm. speak up, which is great, and be like, no, I, I don't think that's it at all. But you know, she's also very respectful, and you know, just when it comes to understanding this stuff and embracing this stuff you know that's that's important and that's fun right um as well as some of those deeper things about you know what is life for what are we here for how can we help others um 
you know, there, there is there's there, there's all these subtleties whenever i say gnosticism i usually just mean the apophrican of john secret john right which is <laughs> which is what i kind of use as the the paradigm but it's it's often been used as the paradigm of, of the gnostic myth so mm -hmm. but, but it's, it's full of all these subtleties and things i'll never understand it's actually full of stoicism jason because I, i've been doing some reason but it, it's uh totally in research but it's but a lot of it is like like the, the theological side of stoicism and the cosmology because they did you know the, the mm -hmm. they, you know it, it's not all about uh feelings and, and <laughs> you know they they were ancient greeks who had, had a cosmology about you know fire and the gods and what have you totally so yeah that that stuff's really apparently uh in the apocryphal john uh all those uh, the stuff about the passions is in there too actually so mm -hmm. um so if you watch her watch our show shirley paulson folks uh because she talks about the passions and that and, and a lot of that comes from from stoicism uh where was i oh yeah the apocryphal john there's there's this very obvious like, like, there's all these subtleties and things you'll never understand, and, and there's literally five thousand books you have to read because it's it's maybe the world's first hypertext. It's it's intertextual <laughs> it plays of all the the, the the this Greek philosophy and the Egyptian books and, and and all that BS. Um, and you know, I'll never understand that. I'll I'll go to my grave. But but it's also full of like really obvious stuff. So, and what one of the really <laughs> obvious metaphors is 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 the the fall of Sophia, you know, so Sophia Sophia's error, what she did wrong, right? Which, which again, there's 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 a number of symbolic aspects to it. But one of the things is 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 it's you can you can look at it as she creates uh, without her without her partner. Some people see a a really sexist metaphor in there, but it's much more complicated than that. But here's the easy mm -hmm. part: she goes away and she creates by herself. Um, what it is, is when you're reading the uh, Secret John, the Apophagon John, I have talked about this uh, in the show before, everything happens as in a divine community, like united. So there's mm -hmm. this outpouring of the divine as the divine splits into, um, uh, you know, like uh, you can pick a cell division or the, the Big Bang uh, mm -hmm. emanates. And uh, each each emanation happens um, with the community's permission, with the love of the community. Um, and then Sophia breaks from the community, this divine community, and go does something all by herself and makes a big mistake. Then the next part, th this is what something that, that I, you know, this is, that part's very obvious. I think what, what a lot of people miss that i think is intended by the author the next part is, is she takes her mistake and she hides it in a cloud and she pushes it away so then then that that's the second part of the mistake it's not only that she went off by herself and did this that she made this mistake and then didn't bring it into the community right mm -hmm. so that, that it could be healed and uh made part of the community the community here is the aeons so i, I think that this is this is a teaching that this is a, an obvious metaphor for the importance of, of community right and if you make mistakes you should bring them back into the community that you shouldn't you know be going off by yourself in this way uh and if you if you do go fuck up off by yourself then uh you can bleep that f that f bomb right <laughs> then you can uh th th there's always a chance to to reconcile so yeah again yeah, and very uh very profound stuff in that book and and it's for whatever reason for the last year on the show i've been saying a hallmark card you know like uh a chinese fortune cookie just just you know uh, but this stuff uh the hallmark card stuff is is, is deeply profound you know sometimes the mysteries mm -hmm. of life aren't that mysterious um so yeah there's 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 12 minutes for a relatively uh simple question but um <laughs> no no i mean this is yeah this is what's on your mind right now yeah. um and i think it's it's really it's really important to hear. Like, I think, um, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, and there's lots of stuff to go off on there too. Like just again, that the importance of, of reading it as a metaphor, I think is sometimes, sometimes we get like, um, uh, and invariably like uh, online people will be really questioning. It's like, well, Hey, how many layers are we talking about here? Or like, you know, is it how, you know, is this entity more powerful than this entity kind of thing? Um, and it's like, sometimes I think it's important, or as you say, remember that these are, this was like this is a story, um, a hypertextual story that's trying to relate to other stories, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, Metaphor, allegory. Um, you yeah. know, I obviously use those interchangeably. I shouldn't. And here's the thing, because I, the Jason, it's great that, that you said that because I think I've become very annoying about this, and I know I have because maybe I've been kicked off some Discord servers and then allowed back in because <laughs> I, um, because I, I'm basically just because. 
look, I, I don't want to, like, all this stuff, like, the Nazism in my reading, particularly these texts, I keep saying Nazism, but I mean the texts, mm -hmm. are, are deliberately mysterious. You know, the, the Gospel of, of Thomas is, is deliberately mysterious. Um, this is this is meant, uh, I think, for, for a few different reasons. One reason is, is there's probably, you're probably supposed to work through it with a teacher or with the community or with the teacher and a community, and there's oral teachings that we've lost. But, mm -hmm. but two, the, they're, they're mysterious um and infuriating because it, it, it's it's to expand your consciousness it's the zen koan thing right exactly yeah. um so to get you out of out of linear day-to-day -day secular materialistic worldly thinking so um so so when approaching these texts i i, I it, it's very important for me in general uh, not just with these texts but with anything related to gnosticism that you know i'm not the king of gnosticism my interpretation of gnosticism is not the only right one um i can learn from others i i'm very humble uh, uh honestly folks when, when <laughs> i i swear when, when it comes when it comes to my relationship with gnosticism uh in my reading of gnosticism um there there is uh, i Gnosticism often takes some of the themes from Christianity and like and 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 um, pushes them up to eleven, right? Turns turns yeah. the volume up to eleven on them, and and I think actually Christian humility is, is one of them, um, and. Mm. Part of that humility is Gnosticism. Uh, something else I, I've been saying a lot lately. Lately, you know, it's we often hear about the gnosis and knowing, but I think it's also a call for a radical on knowing that mm. you have to on know what you think you know so that you can know. Um, you know, <laughs> you know. So I, I, I think like lately I've really been banging the the drum that the folks that the, these are. I'm mixing it up now. These are metaphors. These are allegories. They're actually both, right? These are symbols, yeah. um, um, uh, but they're not just that. Um, so I always want to include that part because, like, like I, I do think that that because the other annoying people online, um, almost an annoying uh, person online, is, is is maybe somebody who's I don't want to say a Jungian, uh, but they're probably a Jungian. That you know that they're like it's it's just it's 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 just symbolic of processes going on in the mind, right? Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you if you have been listening to me lately, or you know reading me um, uh, on certain Discord servers, you'd think that that is my 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 approach, but it's not right. I am banging mm -hmm. the metaphor and uh, allegory drum, but uh, at the same time, I think we really impoverish the, the Gnostic mythos when when we when we say it's just that. And mm -hmm. people who listen and watch the show, they also know that I love saying people who listen and watch the show. Uh, they, they also know <laughs> I love saying that it's 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 not either or, it's it's and, right? It's yeah, one. yeah. So the, these things do work on on a few different levels. Um, and you know, if you read something like the Apophrakana John, it's 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 just these these uh, it, these levels that mirror each other, right? Mm -hmm. That's another teaching. Mm -hmm. The way the book is structured is 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 constant is a constant mirroring. You know that that starts with the uh, with the divine creation, and then you know the the middle creation, and then the the demiurgist creation, which is a kind of weird parody of the divine creation. And we have these 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 levels where these things are happening. So it is happening in your brain, man. But you don't know how big your it is happening in your mind. But you don't know how big your mind is, man. Yeah, well, I, I, I messed up the quote. It's yeah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, Jason. Uh, <laughs> also, that it take get some video software and make take like ten pounds off me um <laughs> give, give me like like a real sharp chin but it's, it's all in your head man you don't know how big your head is I Which I think, uh, well, yeah, there you go. You got the, you got the whole thing. It's uh, Lon Milo Duquette, I think, because yeah. that's his famous quote. Um, yeah. And like he's he when when he says that he's usually talking about uh, usually about like specifically like um, ritual magic, like Aleister Crowley kind of style magic. Um, and again, it's it's one of those things that when I hear people oppose him on that, I feel like they haven't really engaged with the depth of what he means by that. You know. Um, uh, because I, I completely agree. Like, I think we're talking about so much of this stuff uh, is as it's a Zen Cohen. It's meant to crack your head open. Um, so, so taking it literally is the worst, is the worst step, but also minimizing it is the worst step. You know, yeah. <laughs> like um, it's like, you've got to not take it literally, but let yourself be open to something bigger than what it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing in terms of the stuff you're talking about, but like, I think that's a, that's a great way to, to kind of put it. And I'm going to jump around to my questions, the questions I sent you and maybe come back to some other, some of the other ones, but this might be then a good place to jump into something. And it's a subject you and I have discussed before in, in chat rooms and stuff, but um, uh, 
like in terms of your engagement of belief and your engagement in Christian belief, um, like I'm, I'm famously uh, not churchy Gnostic. Like I, uh, um, when we do, when we do my version of this episode and you're asking me the questions, I'll, I'll get more into what I, what kind of a Gnostic I am, but like, um, uh, yeah, I guess I, I'd like to hear a more, a bit from you in terms of how you engage specifically, like with, a. um, sort of a, a primary importance in Christianity, um, like uh, really centering it. And um, uh, yeah, I think I've got some more thoughts I want to go off there, but I think maybe I'll, I'll, I'll ask that question first and let you go, let you go with it and then I'll, I'll build on it. Yeah, I uh, I don't think you have to be a Christian to be a Gnostic. I do believe, and it's 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 not as popular in scholarly circles anymore. But I, I do believe that the Gnosticism is was pre-Christian. Um, I, I think that there are valid non-Christian forms of it, and I think you could find your form and probably find groups as well. Uh, and there, there's a place like the AJC where you know you don't have to be a Christian to be a member. You just have to be comfortable with Christian symbolism. Mm -hmm. um but uh, so you know unlike my my earlier call for for people should just join at, at something right something safe and good um that doesn't of course have to be a, a christian church um mm -hmm. and, and that that's where it is you know my way your way whatever way um the uh uh the for me, it's it's uh, whatever cultural and printing. Um, well, you know, I'm secularizing it, right? Like mm -hmm. because I do believe in Gnostic Jesus, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, but I believe the Gnostic Jesus is the logos and uh, appears and manifests as all sorts of things. So, <laughs> and people and entities and deities, probably. Uh, but oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah uh, but yeah. The, the logos Gnostic Jesus has called me to to know the logos. The, the wisdom, or the, sorry, the, the wisdom of God, which would be Sophia, but it's also kind of the Logos, has, has called mm. me to, to, to know him through through the person of Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, uh, that seems to work with whatever presets my brain has, as well as the, the culture I grew up in, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, as, as I said, I've tried the other stuff, right? You know, I, I tried Buddhism, and I just, uh, Jesus won't leave me alone, and there's times that I wish <laughs> that he would. So, um, but you know, you, you don't have to, you don't have to have that to, to be a Gnostic. You don't have to have that to be a Christian, actually, if you ask me. Um, so, so, so don't worry about that if you don't, if you don't have that kind of egg in you. Um, uh, what was I, you know, th this is the, one of the other things I was going to get onto there was, um, uh, when we were talking earlier about like, uh, some people who've kind of been you know, like had trepidation towards the AJC or, or like a uh, sort of starting from a position of disagreeing with it. Like, I often wonder if it's a, if there's um, a lot of early Gnostic uh, um, academia was really focused on its rebelliousness from orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. And so like um, if anything that looks like a Christian church looks like joining the thing that they got excited about rebelling from, if that makes sense in terms of what I'm trying to kind of say. Um, uh, so then it like, it kind of starts an argument no one really wanted to have, <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, you know? for sure. And, and I think a lot of Christian Gnostics spend a lot of time saying, you know, we're not like those, those Christians, you know what I mean? But, you know, mm -hmm. honestly, uh, uh, a, a lot of the, a lot of people have grown up secular now and they have a very mm -hmm. cartoon idea of what Christianity is and sort of, you know, uh, left wing, progressive, gay embracing, uh, socially, did I already say progressive uh, mm -hmm. Christianity has been mainstream since the 60s and in, in some uh, areas and forms dominant. Actually, in the 60s was more or less dominant if you're going to talk about the Protestant mainline, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the evangelicals um, and fundamentalists were around, but fundamentalists in particular um, uh, the, the people don't realize this uh, because they make so much noise and didn't really enter the political sphere until the 70s where they were kind of brought in. You know, they mm -hmm. thought that the world was 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 a fallen dark place and politics likewise, so they they thought that they should uh, not not sully themselves with it. That's That's uh, fundamentalists, uh, not all evangelicals are fundamentalists, not all fundamentalists are evangelicals, not all evangelicals are conservative, by the way. So, <laughs> um, so actually in the 60s, uh, Mr. Rogers was a, was, was a Christian minister, Jason. And that was, hmm. uh, we're talking about, about Protestantism here, that was basically mainstream, mainline Protestantism in the 60s. Um, Martin Luther King, of course, was, was a minister. Um, and the, the, the sort of, um, 
uh, extremely progressive Christianity is 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 still still dominant in, in in lots of areas and circles. But you know, a funny thing happened. You know, people were given the the kind of faith they were asking for, and and they all left the church. Mm -hmm. So that's I think that's very interesting. But sorry, mm. that, that's going into rants. Now, obviously, there there there's all sorts of of dominant mainstream negative Christianities that continue to do evil things, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and and people do come from those backgrounds. And you know, I, I would actually argue because of this this rebelliousness that you mentioned, you know, Gnosticism, Christian Gnosticism is a great place where you'd end up if you have that background. Um, mm -hmm. But I meet a lot of people who don't have that background, and they they still have the, this cartoon of of what Christianity is. Uh, so you have to spend a lot of time saying that you know we're not we're not like those Christians, and it's it's getting it's a little bit silly. I wish that there was uh, better education and better experiences out there. But we live in a secular society, right? So yeah, um, I, I think what a lot of people with, with the recent, um, and of course, it's not a political show. We can't talk about politics per se, but, you know, we can we can observe the news. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, particularly in the United States, you, you see a lot of changes happening, you know, coming from agitation from the Christian right. But what a, what a lot of people don't realize is that, like, like there's still, you know, huge conservative um evangelical fundamentalist churches right you know those you can see them in, in your mind but you know mm -hmm. a, a lot of those churches are dying even in small towns like those those churches are empty and and where the um people who are going to those churches are going are is like online to like QAnon groups so, right. so so we really are like you know the secularization I, I guess that's not secularization that's a, 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 a the transferring of our religious impulses mm -hmm. is is, mm -hmm. is very heavily upon us and it's just like it is kind of funny that that this is now that that the the, the christian right is making its its gains um when you know they're in some ways uh, their power is waning number wise now obviously there's tons and tons of counter examples to what i'm talking about right you can yeah. walk into to lots of giant mega churches but uh, yeah. as an overall trend this is what's happening so again even that cartoon of of christianity is is not necessarily uh accurate. Mm -hmm. um I, I i think something that you've even touched on there the notion of the 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 mega churches sort of getting hollowed out and, but, but that impulse not going away and shifting somewhere else. There's sort of a whole, um, th there's been a discussion in various places lately about this idea of re-enchantment of yeah. the world. And I, I feel like uh, that's somehow connected there. Maybe that's a whole other show we figure out to do. Um, we really should uh, do. I yeah. mean, we could probably do a little mini series on reenchantment, honestly, because uh. there's a lot of great thinkers and and people out there also thinking about it and writing about it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, even if um, even if I was an atheist, even if you're an atheist, or whoever is watching this, you know, I I would think that that I can still make the argument maybe even more powerfully so uh, from an atheistic standpoint, that, that humans are, are religious animals, that we have these impulses. If you want to phrase it this way, right? We, we have mm -hmm. these impulses that for the last couple hundred years, because in the West, you, you know, the religion is really something kind of created out of the enlightenment, right? They didn't have these these sharp lines mm -hmm. um, between like, you know, art, literature, politics, society, religion, right? These all mm -hmm. blended together. Um, and it's uh, it's more of a modernist way of thinking that we, we segregate out uh, a bunch of beliefs and behaviors that people have and say this is religion but it mm -hmm. seems that some of these beliefs that these behaviors um do seem to be hardwired into us and we have to do something with them um and and religion can be i mean obviously it can be very it can become negative and and uh um uh cultish and destructive but um at least it's it's being honest about what it's doing with these impulses at the end of the day. I think now, and I've talked about this on on the show, a, a, a lot of our religious impulses are are being transferred to all sorts of, of weird places, right? And I think mm. there's ways to channel them that that are not necessarily into religion if you're not a religion person. Uh, yeah. you, I, I think humans have a, a need for for transcendence, or at least to seek transcendence. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know that art is is, is a great uh, output. For I was that. just gonna say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, like I mean, uh, again, we should. Uh, well, we've done we've done shows on art, and we should do more shows on art. Um, and I'll probably talk about this when we get into my episode of this. But uh, but um, yeah, no, getting back, I think more just to focus on you though is like, uh, what are some of your own like practices? How are you like? being a Gnostic, you know, cause I think, I, I, I think, um, 
the reason I wanted to ask this question, the reason I want to do this series of shows is that I think when I started wanting to find out about Gnosticism, I found a lot of people talking about what Gnosticism was like, you know, here's the theories about it. Here's the structures. Here's, you know, the, what we know from history and like a lot of the theory. Um, uh, uh, but there wasn't a whole lot of like, how, how do you go be Gnostic? You know, <laughs> um, the, the joke I often say, say to, um, uh, to, to our, the, the local guy in here, Cal Calgary, uh, Sean, who we've had on the show before is, um, like, what do I do when somebody cuts me off in traffic? Like, how does Gnosticism help me there? You know, um, uh, which isn't to say that spiritual impulses have to be only practical at the most base level, but, um, it is more about like, how do I be a Gnostic when I'm not on Discord or on Reddit or reading a book or listening to a podcast? You know, how do you, uh, how do you like live that? Um, so that's a really rambling way to get around my question. But yeah, how do you, how do you kind of live that? Yeah, well, I, hypothetically, I'd say I have a daily spiritual practice, but we're at a chat together where we uh, log our spiritual practice. So you know that that's not true. Um, <laughs> but that's, folks, I have a baby, so I'm, I'm going to yeah. get back to it. So I would say a, a daily formal spiritual practice, you know, um, uh, the church uh, twice a month, right, uh, mm -hmm. is when we meet, uh, martyrism once a month. Um, and... Um, you know, it is funny because there is all this grand mythos and um, uh, uh, theories and all this fun stuff with Gnosticism. But, you know, I sort of have an out with, with Christian Gnosticism, which is, oh, no, not this. Yeah, which is, you know, some of those those tr tr trying to practice those traditional Christian virtues of, of mm -hmm. honesty, humility. Uh, folks, I keep coming back to humility, right? Because if you're watching this at home, you can see literally the size of my head, right? It is, the, I, it's, it, I have a large, physically, I have a large head. So it's, <laughs> it's, it makes sense that it works metaphorically as well. So that's, um, that, that's, see, that's an illustration of what Chase and I were talking about. Hopefully you're listening to this as a podcast. Um, uh, what else? Um, I, I think for, for Gnosticism as well, where, um, you know, you can have this nutritional Christianity where all human beings uh, are equal because they have the breath of God, right? Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Gnosticism takes it up to 11 where, where we're all lost gods. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, just understanding other people as, as lost gods and actually trying to interact with them in that way, viewing them in that way, that, that, that leads to, to a real change of heart, right? Just in mm -hmm. your, your daily, your daily practice with people and uh, compassion for, for people. I think too, for specifically Gnostic, Gnosticism, you know, um, it, uh, it's funny cause you know, I, I, I've been doing a run of shows or, or, or had a lot of guests on that, that, that were talking about, you know, how a lot of these texts are misread and they're not as negative as, as you would think. And, and there's some agreements I have there because I think that the texts are paradoxical or maybe a better word would be dialectical where mm -hmm. uh, there, there is this, a paradox of of divinity poured out into the world um and uh, a lot of a lot of hope uh there and a lot of beauty there but at the same time you know that existentialist depressing reading of gnosticism that a lot of scholars say now is not necessarily correct or of these texts gnostic texts mm -hmm. or of these texts formerly called gnostic um you know i i'm actually a, a big fan of those those more depressing readings um and, and i think understanding that, you know, maybe a Christian may say we live in a fallen world, right? But, you know, taking it one step further as a Gnostic and, you know, not just a fallen world, but a but a, but a world where, where everything is always going to be a little bit broken, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the world that is that is ruled by, by something that, that doesn't have your best interests at heart, you know, that there is a certain tragic dimension to life uh, uh, at all times. You know, putting that into practice, I think it is actually a good thing, right? Yeah. Because um, it, it, it allows you to to appreciate the good things more it allows you to have more sympathy and compassion for for those around you uh and it uh helps you to understand that that you're not the center of, of the universe um and that you know things go wrong because they're supposed to go wrong because that's the nature of this world right mm -hmm. um and uh it's not always a, a very nice place um and, and i think kind of touching that reality is is very sobering and, and depressing but at the same time 
uh, it's uh, uh, more honest um, and perhaps a, a better way to to live one's life uh, because it allows you to see things as they really are, right? Mm -hmm. um, does, you know, I, I, I would sum up Gnosticism, you know, the purpose of life uh, in Gnosticism is, is to become disillusioned without becoming, you know, cynical and hard-hearted. So, you know, there is, a certain, there is a certain amount of, you know, literally disillusionment that the Gnosticism calls for, right? Because you're supposed mm -hmm. to be through the illusions of, of the the rulers and principalities of the, of this age and of this world, so um, you know uh, it, it's hard to to do that and and not become uh, 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 you know staring into the abyss. The, the abyss stares back. Um, mm -hmm. So I I think you know at the same time because we, we have all this happy stuff in Dosses. Uh, yeah. there, there, that, uh, that, that there's a good countervailing weight there. So yeah, so I think I think all those rambles kind of address address living it. Well, and I think like something that you've pointed out uh, here, and I've I've heard you point it out before. This is this is kind of the meat of the stuff that I wanted to get into. Um, is that? Uh, uh, but I think it's it's well well encapsulated here. Is that? Um, and it goes back even to the notion of not relativizing Gnosticism by just saying it's all in your head. Um, uh, that we also don't want to relativize or sanitize Gnosticism by saying it's like, it's not that bad, you know, um, that there's no, you know, like, oh, the Demiurge is just mistaken. We should forgive him kind of thing. Like, um, although that, 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 that can also be a valid reading, you know, if, if, if that's, uh, if that's your approach, but where I'm, where I'm going with this is that I, I think you've, you've hit on something that I don't engage with very often, which is uh, staring at the fact that bad things happen and not turning away from it or trying to ignore it. I think that's really important. Um, I think that the, the thing that always comes up for me around this stuff is that I feel like it can turn into uh, what I've often called the Gnostic trap where all you talk about, or not you specifically, but all, all a, a person can t can end up talking about is the Demiurge and the Archons and Yaldabaoth and, and like how they're all out to get you and, and how it's all going to be bad. And if you just subscribe to our premium member feed, then we'll solve all your problems. Um, but uh, how do you avoid, um, how do you avoid kind of uh, getting into the place in which that, um, unflinching stare at what's going on in the world doesn't turn into um, the escape valve for those things. Like that, like um, I now just get to blame everything bad on these spiritual forces and that's it. Like I don't have to engage with it anymore. How do you avoid that trap? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think there's a danger there as well. And it's, it's a danger of, you know, perhaps severe mental illness. If you think that these, these specific named spiritual forces are out to get you as an individual. Again, I think these things are, are more than metaphor, but at the same time, if, if they, if they are real, they don't, they don't care that much about you as an individual. Maybe they care about the divine spark inside of you, which isn't even really you. If you're going with the Apophrican of John, um, it's, 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 they've set up a, a, a system right a, a destructive uh um uh system a machine right and mm -hmm. they've they've hit they've hit go on the machine and we're stuck in in this machine being uh ground up within it um and it's uh it's a real downer man but um i i think too that understanding the, some of the impersonal nature of it um you know not taking it personally um mm. and, um i i think too you know i i differ from you know this is a little bit tricky right because it's it's mm -hmm. what do you do with uh with a religion that's been dead until the 1800s and even then is 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 pretty tiny you know the, the ajc is non-dogmatic uh as i said we're probably missing certain keys and understandings for these these texts um there's i i, I I think it is in the text. I think it is there in in Secret John, right? Where where mm -hmm. there is an awful lot about about getting out of this world um, and liberation uh, from this world. Um, but I, I don't know how how literally we should take that because at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, th this great outpouring of God um, is is a material thing, right? The, the Gnosticism is radically incarnational. It's it's more incarnational mm -hmm. than mainstream Christianity because it's not just Christ that's the incarnated God. It's all of us as the incarnated God, right? So mm -hmm. so where where is God as, as far as we can know and understand him? He's he's here in materiality. And as I've talked about before, there there seems to be some use 
meaning to this materiality for God trying to understand itself. Um, mm -hmm. Again, you know, Sophia just means wisdom, the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God tries to know God. And when the wisdom of God tries to know God, what happens is the material world. You know, that seems, you know, I got to say that that, that seems that that indicates that there's there's some sort of purpose to the material world. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I'm atheistic enough to. You know, lots of ancient peoples didn't believe in life after death. Um, and if there is life after death, um, the, the there's kind of different forms of Gnosticism and in Gnostic -y religions where we're fully formed um, intelligences, right? Uh, we're angels before before mm -hmm. the fall, right? That, that's Kafirism. But if you look at the Apophrican of John, uh, and this is also Platonism, where, where we're fully we're fully uh, we're identities. We're 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 souls uh, before, mm -hmm. before we fall into matter. It's Hermeticism as well. But that's that's not in the Apophrican of John, right? The demiurge mm -hmm. does, doesn't doesn't hijack a bunch of people. From, doesn't hijack a bunch of aeons. Doesn't steal a bunch of souls. It steals the dynamis from um, from Sophia. Dynamis is a very interesting mm -hmm. word, word, Jason, because it, mm -hmm. it's usually translated as power. But it can also, it, and it does mean power, but it can also be translated as something like potential. Hmm. Um, yeah, anyway, steals this power, this potential from Sophia, and that's what becomes us, right? Um, and at the same time, but that, that thing isn't, that thing's embedded in us. You know, that, that's something like deep inside of us. But what we think is us is covers that, right? Covers mm -hmm. up that shard. So, so even when I, I die, you know, what I, th that shard will continue, but it's, it's not me as I know myself. So, you know, we're, we're talking, we're talking, um, how many angels can dance on, on a pin, on, on the head of a pin here, um, mm -hmm. uh, about, about life after death. So, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I do believe in life after death and I'm not an Apophrican of John, a uh, fundamentalist either. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, some, some days I wake up and have very traditional Christian ideas of, about life after death, but, but I think it's healthy to live, um, sometimes as if there is no life after death. Um, and as I said, uh, if you're going by, by Gnostic rules, you know, if you want to get out of here, well, you, you're the dynamic. So you are not getting out of here. So mm -hmm. I, I think that if you're going to go by the mythos, understanding that, 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 that the materiality in this world uh, is important and has its place uh, and mm -hmm. you have a place in it, even if it's lousy, uh, then that's, that's that's something mm, <laughs> you know totally yeah yeah no that's I'd great rather, uh, yeah i'd rather be some conscious stardust you know i'm glad that this, <laughs> this i'm glad after the great bang that this stardust uh call the vest here even even if it's awful mm. so i i think that 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 more or less answers answers the question yeah, yeah. and it's i mean like uh i would say to to kind of even temper some of what you're saying to make sure that maybe people are hearing all of it um Although maybe I'm maybe I'm I'm not uh, uh, understanding you correctly, and this will be where you'll correct me. But like, um, you're not also necessarily saying that reality reality as we know it is is uniformly terrible. Like yeah. everything about it is terrible. Um, yeah. It's it's not, it might be diminished or fallen or or um, you know broken or in you know what whatever the the term one might use might be, but. Uh, but there are moments in within it um, that that have reward, you know, have have value at a spiritual level, not just at a physical level. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. And again, you're getting into like hallmark shit. Right? Oh, can you yeah. know that? Okay, I got it. I don't know what's <laughs> up with me tonight. See what happens when I'm when I'm not when I'm not the host, Jason. I just I tell <laughs> a potty mouth. Yeah, it just sounds like hallmark stuff, but it's true, right? And it's um, I I think it's I I think it's a worthy way and maybe a healthy way to live one's life. Now, I'm not preaching because I don't always live my life like that, right? So mm -hmm. um, the, the it's something that that I aspire to, and and it's also you know there, there's a crack in everything, but that's how the light gets in because again, it kind of sounds like hallmark stuff, and and it, and it, I think Gnosticism takes suffering seriously, um, and. The, the divine actually doesn't want us to suffer um, and there's not a plan where, where we're supposed to be tortured. But at the same time, um, this materiality that that is important, that is inevitable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think in the Apophrican of John, it says that it's inevitable. The Great Bang, the Big Bang, what's the Great Bang? The Big Bang was inevitable. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, so I think that, that it does take suffering seriously and says it's bad. And, it, you know, it, it's not that suffering is a test or we have to suffer so we know what non-suffering is. But more mysteriously and harder to understand is there's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in, right? Because, again, I like saying dialectically a lot because it makes you sound smart, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, d- dialectically, this is, this is... Oh, what allows us to 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 not only appreciate but to have good things right so Mm -hmm. you know we can't we can't have any 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 good things in this world without 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 bad things to accompany them because that that is the nature of of materiality um and interesting uh, interesting like that almost sounds like um when i say this i don't mean it in accordance to their spiritual tradition uh, more like what is commonly known of uh, in terms of their their binary quality, but Manichaeanism, um, yeah. uh, in terms just in terms of that, like like it's it's almost a logical process. If we have good things, we're ne- then we are also going to have bad things, you know, um, that they are like literally connected by virtue of being one or the other uh, versus a completely undiluted single thing. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um, uh, well, though, this has been great. And I, uh, so I have one, well, I, <laughs> I'm going to do two things. First, the, the, the first thing I'm going to do is before I forget, I'm going to do a quick Patreon pitch. <laughs> um, I, uh, if any of you listening are enjoying the show, um, then yeah, please feel free to, uh, uh, what is the, what is it again? PayPal <laughs> or no, uh, Patreon.com Patreon. slash Gnostic um uh for for uh funding at all different kinds of levels uh or individual amounts that you want to give we can do more of what we're doing here um we we take requests <laughs> uh we'll do cover bands if you want to if you want us to to play a song uh well, maybe not i i'm not a very good singer but yeah if you want to contribute to the to the conversation that we're having and be a part of that uh the be part of the community as you were talking about earlier then this would be a great place to start um uh, so yeah, that's my that'll be my 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 Patreon pitch. Um, the my last question, and if this is a question actually you're not comfortable answering, um, then that's fine, um, and we can just kind of we'll we'll find a natural close after that. But um, you've become a father recently, you know you you're 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 having you have a family now, um, uh, and is like how is that experience for you? as a Gnostic, like, are you, are you experiencing anything? Are you encountering anything in terms of your belief in terms of the, the things you're seeing in the world, you know, um, uh, as part of the thing, this thing that's happened to you? Yeah, for sure. I think too, for, for, for some of my, my more positive spin, um, you know, looking into my daughter's eyes, like means that I can't completely go of any interpretation of a Gnostic text or the Apophrican of John that says, you know, this is a, a completely evil mistake, right? Uh, mm-hmm. This world. Uh, and that, uh, uh, or a completely negative reading of, of existence. Um, mm-hmm. And again, right? Like, you know, someday, someday I will age and die. Someday she will age or die. Maybe she'll be hit by a car next year and die, right? But the, the that is that, that the dialectical relationship of what I was talking about about that the fact that i got to look into her eyes and have this wonderful experience and she i mean i'm only talking about me she she's having a pretty great time she's a pretty happy baby so hmm. um so you know i uh, i think right now uh you know she's she's asleep but she had a baby mum mum before bed i i think she's pretty happy that sophia made a mistake and that she got incarnated here you know <laughs> um <laughs> that's a great way to put it yeah, yeah. and i think like uh, you say or said earlier that it's like a hallmark thing i wonder too if we have a as gnostics particularly as gnostics that are surrounded by theory and text if if we feel almost um uncomfortable with simplicity you know um yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> like oh no no this is far too simple for me to just purely be feeling love in my in my daughter's eyes you know um and and translating that as a as 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 an engagement of of uh of belief yeah. well, you, well you know i i think this is some of this consciousness expanding stuff that i was talking about where where you know uh, uh, maybe it sounds elitist i'm sure there's other ways to do it but but doing all the zen kwan stuff reading all these complicated texts having all these complicated ideas that paradoxically expands your brain so that you can see and appreciate how simple things can and are be 
you know, mm-hmm. because, uh, yeah, again, to go Gnostically or to go, the human experience seems to be that we're constantly lost in illusion and delusion, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and sometimes just being able to see something that is very simple clearly is, is a, a great act, a wonderful mm-hmm. act, um, and a very hard act. Um, and I, I think that's also what th- that's part of the knowing of what Gnosticism calls for, right? Is gazing yeah. into a beloved's eyes. Uh, it can be as simple as that, but it's it's not as it's rarely as you know, like it is as simple as that, but it's not, you know. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're all wrapped up in in all these uh, layers of illusion and delusion, right? Both um, mm. exterior and and interior. Um, I, I think as well, you know, for my closing remarks, um, you know, when you when you read the Apophrican of John, you know, they say some things about the body, even then that I don't really think when, when they're talking about the body, they're not, they're talking about something that is, they're, they're talking about the passions. They're talking about materiality. They're talking about the body. Things are happening on a few different levels there. Right. So it's not mm-hmm. just your beat sack. Um, but what the Apophrican of John is, is really obsessed with is the counterfeit spirit. Right, mm. which is which is what's the, that thing inside of your head? So I, I think too of Gnosticism, we spend too much time thinking about out there, mm. um, this this mean old world that's that's out to get me. Um, and when you actually read the text, it's 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 obsessed with you know what's in here, right? The counterfeit sphere yeah. is what it's what's what it's really going on and on about. Um, mm. So I, I think that that turn inward, I, I think too the, the you know that's an important aspect of of the Gnostic contemplate contemplative uh turn inward um mm. yeah anyways okay well that's Good. great i i think that that's that's a, a tough act to follow <laughs> i think that's a great that's a great closing statement um the only the only um addendum i want to put on there is that it uh some of what you were talking about there about like the big ideas and stuff is that it reminds me of uh, something i think scott rasbach said in one of the conclave lectures he gave um quite a few years ago but i think it was the effect of that the um uh, that some of these rituals and theories and ideas might be so complicated, so th- specifically so that they break open your head, so that you can have a simple thought, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. you can have a gnostic experience, you know. Yeah, um, well, we talked about in, in in one of our many chats, right? That the, yeah. sometimes I think the mass is 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 that you know where mm-hmm. if, if you can make a simple meal of of bread and wine, which is what people in the ancient world literally ate every day, and even now it's a pretty simple meal. If you mm-hmm. can make that holy, then you can make anything holy. It's a trick, right? Yeah, a uh, little trick on your brain. What's that? What's that line from the AJC Mass? There is nothing mundane. In the if I holy? try to say it, I'll mess it up. And you know, <laughs> so let's put that in the show notes. We'll put that in the show notes. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, the first mass I ever went to had that. Oh wait, what was it? They had a. Uh, 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 sorry, this would be a funny f- story, for folks. But there's there's another line that's that's something like uh, uh, material, immaterial, like spiritual things are to be cherished, people are to be cherished, and material things are are, are will be usually cherished. Do you remember what the, that line is? Oh um, yeah, uh, when when material things are used and people cherished, um, and and uh, like something like disconnection happens when material things are cherished and people are used. Yes, thank you. It's a beautiful line. Material. Yeah. Uh, yeah, beautiful line, beautiful line. Uh, but my first ever mass, they actually had a, a misprint in the, the text that they handed out to people that, that said, <laughs> you can guess what it said. It said the opposite. So <laughs> that was that is awesome. Mass, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, uh, we, ah. should, we should go. I, I, I found the quote from one of the AJC documents here. Oh. Um, uh, so, because I'm, I'm part of a local group. Um, and so I've got these printouts. Um, uh, in the darkness of our ignorance, we sorrowfully pro- proclaim there's nothing holy in the mundane. Yet by the light of the sacred flame, we see that there's nothing mundane in the holy. Which I just love that line. I mean, like, I'm not very, I'm not a, uh, I'm not all about churchy stuff. And yet I find that line incredibly powerful. Yeah, I hope, I hope I didn't, banger. didn't, uh, like, breach some kind of copyright to have, to have no, stated no, that online. I'm okay. pretty sure you're allowed to say that one line. So uh, <laughs> if not, you'll hear about it. But no, you're, That's allowed, true. To, you're allowed to quote. <laughs> they, 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 don't, they don't print out the full the, the, the full masses. Uh, no. so, but I, I'm sure you're allowed to quote. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Good night. Well, yeah, this has been great. Um, John, thank you so much for this. Uh, we'll, we'll, hopefully they'll all hear, hear you again asking me these questions sometime soon. And we'll... Uh, We'll go from there. Uh, Thanks, everybody, and we'll talk to you again soon.